Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. I am an Apostolic Pentecostal. And if you're joining my channel for the first time, welcome. I've needed you. I've been out of the game for too long, but we're starting a brand new series today on an apostolic perspective on other church sermons. Now, what does that mean? Well, you've probably seen a video like this before where a YouTuber comments on like a viral video or a funny video that happened that week. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but watch other church sermons from other Christian denominations and kind of put an apostolic perspective on what I think of the sermon. And is it telling the full truth or is it only telling half the truth or is it telling no truth at all? Now, before I get started, I want to let you all know I'm not criticizing any of these sermons that I'm watching. I'm just operating according to Second. Timothy 3.16, which says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So there we see right there, the Bible can be used for reproof or correction for sound doctrine. So the first video that we're going to be watching uh, is by a pastor named Francis Chan, very popular on YouTube. And the title is Simple Truth About Baptism. Now, if you know anything about an apostolic Pentecostal, we're very passionate about being baptized in Jesus name and being baptized by the Holy Ghost. But with no further ado, let's run this intro and we'll get started. <laughs> Simple truth about baptism. Let's go. The last time I spoke, and I spoke on the Holy Spirit, and it's been so good. I've had so many positive responses about this series on the Holy Spirit. But the last time I spoke, I got a lot of confusion coming back. A lot of people hmm. were confused after my last message over one issue. When I preached on Acts 2.38... Woo! Okay, let's go. I love this. I'm telling you, if you ever go to an apostolic church, when they mention Acts 2.38, you will literally see the whole congregation just lose their mind. We're so, so passionate about this Bible verse. So let's, uh, man, let's just continue. Uh, where the passage says, repent and be baptized. Right, right. And you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Absolutely. I've had all sorts of emails and phone calls and letters asking, okay, well, it sounded like you were saying I have to repent and then be baptized and then receive the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This was the very first sermon ever preached in the Bible after Jesus ascended back up into heaven. So yes, do what the apostles did. And then other people were asking, well, can I be a Christian without being baptized? Mm -mm. Others were saying, can I be a Christian without repenting? Absolutely not. Can I be a Christian without the Holy Spirit? Whoo! And when does the Holy Spirit actually come in? If I just repent and do I get the Holy Spirit right then without being baptized? And all these questions came in, and I, I want to answer them all with a question back at you. Now, a lot of the modern day churches don't believe in the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is very much still alive. It's still moving into the church today because it came down in Acts 2-4 on the day of Pentecost when there was a mighty rushing wind and they started speaking in other tongues as this Holy Spirit gave utterance to them. And remember, this was a promise Jesus gave that he said, wait in Jerusalem when he's talking to the apostles until I send out my Holy Spirit in my name and thou will be the sign for you to go out and preach uh, the rest of the gospel uh, that I have taught unto you. Why do you ask? Because hmm. they didn't ask. They, they asked one question. When they heard the message, when they heard the gospel message, when they heard that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, that he paid the penalty for their sins, he heard that he was buried and he rose from the grave, they asked a different question. They asked, what do we need to do? Wow, that's such, such a good point right there. 
So many of the church just questions why baptism is necessary, why repentance is necessary, why they have to receive the Holy Spirit. Notice what the apostles did. They didn't question whatsoever. They just simply asked, what shall we do next? And then Acts 2.38 happens. What do we need to do? Peter's response was, well, you need to repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They didn't ask any questions after that. What they did was they repented, got baptized, and were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing I'm noticing as I'm watching this, he's not saying baptize in Jesus' name. That's the most important part, is you gotta be baptized by immersion in water into Jesus' name. Jesus said, anything you do, do it in my name. So if you're gonna pray over your food in Jesus' name, if you're gonna pray over the health of your family, why not get baptized in Jesus' name? Come on now, Jesus' name. I know, it's a crazy response, isn't it? They just did it. But we would rather ask a bunch of questions and we would rather philosophize and speculate and go, well, yeah, but technically, can't you really, I mean, did they really have to get baptized? I mean, I mean, and when, when did the Holy Spirit come in? Was it when they got under the water? Or was that when he came in or when they come out? Or was he already in them or did it take the Holy Spirit to get them to repent anyways in the first place? Or, or what if they were on their way down and they trip? You know, what, what, what about... Okay, he's, uh, I'm not really kind of sure where he's going with this point because baptism in Jesus' name with water and baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate events, okay? Notice in Acts 2.38, it talks about repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, as you go through the book of Acts, you kind of see some scenarios where people have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, then they just need to get baptized in Jesus' name, and some got baptized in Jesus' name, then received the gift of the Holy Ghost. The main thing to understand is that these two events are separate. They do not happen at the same time, and very rarely do they happen at the same time. If they were to happen at the same time, it would be someone being baptized in Jesus' name, raised up in water, then receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost by the external sign of them speaking in an unknown tongue. What about this? What about that? You guys, they just did it. I don't understand the questions. I don't understand where the questions are coming from because my seven-year-old, my seven-year-old was in service and she understood. My seven-year-old was in service that Saturday night, comes home crying and says, Dad, I want to be baptized. I want the Holy Spirit Beautiful. in me. I want to follow Jesus. Beautiful. And uh, I go, great, baby. That's great. So <laughs> you know what you need to do? Come back tomorrow morning and get baptized. And so she did. And she's up here crying and, and asking Jesus, you know, asking for the Holy Spirit to come into her life to help her live the way that she went. My seven-year-old got it. She didn't come home and say, well, okay, Dad, hmm. explain this to me. I love where he's going with this. And this is kind of a weakness that we have in the church today where people are just too smart to do the simple things. They think it's a much more complicated process to follow Jesus when really it's not. If you would just depend on Jesus fully with everything you've got, then Jesus will come and take care of you. All right, you don't have to do this on your own. The steps are very, very simple, like it illustrates in Acts 2.38. Just repent, all right? Turn your mind, turn your heart, turn your direction away from sin. Be baptized in Jesus' name for, for what? For the complete removal of all your sins, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's not a complicated process. It's not a 17 steps to, to enlightenment, it's three. And it doesn't take any works of salvation or anything like that. It's just three little simple steps. It's crazy, but she just obeyed. It was like those believers back then that didn't sit around as a bunch of theological scholars. They just heard, repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Great, let's do it. They didn't care when the right. Spirit came in and what second, what moment, what came first. They just did it. And what's crazy to me is that we have gotten so off track 
in America and the way we talk about the Bible mm -hmm. that nowadays people say you can be a Christian without repenting, being baptized, or having the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely not. That's the one thing that I want to use this video for is that if you are involved in a congregation that does teach all right, that you don't have to repent, that you don't have to be baptized in Jesus' name, that you don't have to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, that is not sound doctrine. That is nothing according to the Bible. I mean, how many gospel presentations do you hear where people say, well, just walk down an aisle, mm. pray a prayer, receive Jesus. Okay, where do you see that in the Bible, though? Absolutely. I mean, I did it. I did it as a kid because that's what I was told and I was in the system and I felt just absolutely fine with it until I started reading the scriptures. And it never sat well with me. Where does it talk about this prayer for receiving? Beautiful. Uh, Francis Chan, you are, you are hitting it on the nail right here because this is taught in many churches today that all you got to do is come to the altar, ask Jesus into your heart, and that you are saved from that. And that is completely unbiblical. You cannot, all right, if you're watching this video, in, in the comments, all right, find me the scripture that does say this, that if you say this prayer, you will be saved, okay? It doesn't exist. This is a philosophy that man has read scripture fun from, pulled it way out of context, okay? Or, Put some, uh, pulled some scriptures from here and from here and then form their own type of way of salvation. That's completely not of God. And it's very, very sad. It's a burden in my heart because this is what I thought for many, many years before I found the apostolic church where they did, where they did teach truth to me, that it is all found in Acts 2.38. There's no such thing as a prayer of believing in Jesus Christ for your heart, okay? That just simply doesn't exist. I see repentance, I see baptism, I see the Holy Spirit, but, but what, where, where, where are we getting this? And the longer I'm a believer, the more I'm going, wait, I, am I going crazy here? Or are we missing the obvious? Repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It was simultaneous to them. You know, when, when Paul wrote to the, to the Romans, he just says, you know, don't you understand when you were, ba when you were baptized, when, you, not if, when you were baptized? Wow. It was just an assumed thing. A Christian was baptized. There it is right there. An assumed thing. That baptism shouldn't be a question. It shouldn't be, uh, should I do it when I'm ready? It should be just go and do it and let Jesus take care of everything else. Again, that's only the first step is to be, be repent, to be baptized in Jesus' name. And again, I don't know why he's not saying that because it's found in every Bible, okay? In any version, all right? You can go to the Holy Bible app, you can check for yourself, but it does say be baptized in Jesus' name. Very, very clear. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So uh, I think I'm going to cut it right here. I think I've seen enough of this sermon. Um, beautiful uh, job, though. I think this is going to be a great video. I'm very curious to kind of see how you all are going to respond to this. So if you are not apostolic, I'm talking to my Baptist friends, my Methodist friends, my Presbyterian friends, my Mormons, my Seventh-day Adventists. I'm talking to all you all. I want to hear your input uh, down below. From a, from a other denomination to an apostolic uh, believer on is baptism really necessary for salvation. So thank you all so much. I love you all. Thank you all for watching. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Definitely want to know what you all got out of it. But most importantly, share this message. Share it with your best friend. Put it on your Facebook. Slap it on your Instagram. Doesn't even matter. We're trying to get this message out. And hey, don't let your blessing streak in. Check out some of these other videos we got here. Hey, love you all so much. Gotta go. Bye-bye.